Hi, I'm Piers Ward. You've joined us at the Asprey and you're watching Me and My Golf TV. And I'm Andy Proudman. And today we're talking to 2013 US Open champion Justin Rose about his golf swing. Let's take charge of your game. Right, welcome to Me and My Golf TV. We have myself, Piers Ward, Andy Proudman, and our special guest, Justin Rose. Justin, thanks for having me. How are you? Yeah, the US Open uh, over there as well, obviously. Fantastic. Yep. Shut up the camera. Yeah, bring that in there. <laughs> bring that in there. Okay, so guys, you've, we've asked you, we said we were going to meet Justin, and we've got, you know, we've asked you to get lots of questions for you as well. And obviously, our YouTube channel, Justin, is all about technique and improving golf swings. So, for you, how important is it to have a, a golf coach? Obviously, you do a lot of work with Sean Foley at the moment, I assume, still. Yes, yes, yes okay. Um, and how important is that? I mean, it is important. It depends what type of player you are. I mean, there's a lot of field players out there who just literally see the golf ball, don't like what they see, feel it, react to it, and, and just, just figure it out themselves. But for me, to be to be the best you can be, yeah, um, you want to sort of have something that's going to hold up under pressure, and you're not always trying to um, be out there adjusting in the moment. So yeah. you're going to have something that's going to repeat for you. And uh, Sean and I have worked hard on that. There's always got to be a plan in place, yes. and uh, you know, we've we've been through a couple of different phases. We've been through back swing, back swing phase, down swing phase, and I'll say now we're in the through swing phase, which is kind of the final phase for me. So um, yeah, we've worked through some good feels over the years, and uh, you know I might bounce around with sort of ten to twelve different swing keys and feels that we've worked on, but they all fit within the blueprint yeah. of what we're trying to achieve. And never at one time. Though. <laughs> Never at one time. I mean, I could maybe fit six in my head. I've been yeah. known to play with yeah. more swing keys than most. Okay. But yeah, yeah. That's uh, obviously the, the more simple you keep it, the better. But I've always been a fan of at least one or two swing keys. For me, it helps block out other thoughts jumping into your head. It keeps you focused. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Smart. Good. Okay, and, and leading into another question, I suppose there. Then just things that. On, I suppose how you used to swing it, and, then, and how you swing it now, Sean. Sure, what are the major differences? between then and now, and why did you make the changes that, that you did to where you are today? Yeah, um, the, the changes came actually when I played with some of Sean's clients, some of his boys. Uh, Sean O'Hare was the one that, that really stands out. Um, played in the 2008 US Open, and uh, I was working on something, and Sean O'Hare was working on something completely the opposite. Uh, I was working on staying on the right side and sort of getting rid of the lag and trying to feel the loft at impact. And Sean was like really sort of stomping down on his left foot, pulling the club down into the hit area, and then really being very hard turn left, you know, then really yeah. rotate hard left. And I was like, wow, that's just the polar opposite to what I'm doing. And Sean hit like 32 greens for the first 36 that I played with him. And I'm like, this is a different level. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I believe in myself as a golfer. and. Uh, Obviously, from an information point of view, I thought I'm missing something here. So that's when I started to seek Sean's advice. And um, yeah, what I was doing, I think I, my swing was very linear. So it was very up, down, and then, you know, uh, so basically my swing was traveling too much up and down a line yeah. with the plane rather yeah. than being maybe a little bit more around me and rotational. So um, I would say we did flatten out the back swing a little bit. Yeah. And then drop the left arm down onto plane so I could then be aggressive with my turn. I would start turning too early, which would get the left arm out. And obviously, if you keep turning from that point, you'll actually miss the ball. Mm -hmm. So to land the club on the ball, you've got to like stop turning. So we call it hit the brakes. You've got to hit the brakes so the arms then drop into the hitting area. But then you've lost all the momentum of the turn. And what happens then? You just flip your hands at it. So I started to get the left arm pinned more across my chest so I could then move it all together and rotate through impact, which obviously stabilizes the club face. Yeah. So that's been the real change, but for me, is keeping that club face stable through the hitting area is still the final frontier. I still have a tendency to separate a little bit, chase it down the line with my right hand and right arm. But that's also a lot to do with some of my limitations physically too. I don't have a lot of internal hip rotation on my left hip. Okay, which so is you're, crucial. Yeah, which is crucial. So you'll see me roll quite a lot onto my left foot, yeah. and that's that's just a, a way of me trying to get range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep that rotation going. Release really high pressure, isn't it? Exactly. So, because my hip capsule, the way it's structured, I've tried everything physio, stretching, training, but it's just like a mechanical mm -hmm. the way my hips are built. They just don't internally rotate that much. So that's, that's my limiting factor. So, it's how do I shorten my work around that? Would and you say, uh, in, your, in your setup, Justin, with yourself, would you say that 
you allowed for that in your setup with maybe any any left of player? Would you account Correct. for that in, in your setup with that one? Yeah, I would say I do do a little, have a little bit of it. I haven't never described it that way, but yeah, left foot flaring out a little bit just creates. Uh, it really puts me in a slightly rotated position, helps me get through it. But what's begun to be a limiting factor for me too is if I start to go lateral for too long, I'm basically running out of room, mm -hmm. and that at that point I, I'm stopping rotation and I start to then stand up. And again, that, that, that results in me throwing the club. So the more I can actually stay, not on my right side, but the more I can stay in my posture, being a bit more balanced with my legs, so not sort of like getting past the ball with too much lateral yeah. movement, so the more I can stay over the ball, but really rotational. Yeah. Yeah. That for me is the move I'm working on. And then with my hands, I've got, I've got a neutral release, and then the new one that I'm working on, which I'm calling lagging it up the plane. Okay. So that's slightly de-locking the club for impact, which is the way I'm yeah, trapping the ball. So I'm not longer trapping it by getting on top of it, yeah. I'm trapping it by staying on it, stroke just behind it, but then in that position there. Just slightly like, exactly, which uh, is actually shallowing me out for impact, yeah. which is taking spin off, and obviously through the de-lock is also yeah. taking care of the ball flight. So Hopefully that's something that's going to work for me at the Open yeah, Championship. A lot of stuff there guys like, for you to think about, but <laughs> obviously Justin's got plenty of time to, to do this. But um, I mean, it sounds like obviously, I think with what Sean, how Sean probably coaches, a lot of his players sort of swing a similar sort of way, don't they? Very much centered and rotation and getting more on yeah. top of the ball. Um, very much so, but Sean, I remember when I first started working with Sean, we would start left, yeah. stay left, go left. So everything was definitely left, but now, you know, Sean's evolved, he's learned more, and uh, we now really work on loading the right side more and almost using more of the right side as our axis of rotation, not so much going left. Mm -hmm. So I've, had, I've actually learned that by staying on my right side, the club exits more left quickly, mm -hmm. and that's actually just if I stay on my right side, I actually hit more of a fade. Mm -hmm. In, intuitively, I always thought if I stay on my right side, I'm going to hook it. Depends what they do, I suppose. It does depend yeah. what the hands do, but if you keep that neutral on the, on the plane, it's actually, yeah, your path goes left much sooner. Mm -hmm. So obviously if you're going, if you start leaning on it, yeah. it's actually shoving the path out further right for yeah. longer. So, um, you know, that's all the stuff I've learned. You know, the D, the D plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. track man yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the swing is a circle. Yeah. We swing it around ourselves. And where you contact that ball on the circle, um, the term is where it's going to start. So the more you put the ball back, the more your swing path is into out, and the more space is going to be open. So that's more of a draw. Yeah. So you can make the same swings, put the ball a couple of balls back, and you're going to start it right and hopefully draw it. But um, those are the little things that I've had to learn. Yeah. Time. We need just on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can you come and tell our students that, please? <laughs> It'll really help. I, I mean, we do a lot of drills and things like that, and we, you know, our videos are based around that. Someone will put a question in and say, "Oh, I've got a problem with this, and I've got a problem with that. Can we go to drill to stop it?" So. It's US Open, last round, have you all, or any scenario, have you had a game-changing drill that has done it that really helped you? I know this is a really difficult well, question. I didn't like what I was swinging at the US Open. Okay. I thought it was, I mean, I'm really picky with my backswing. Sean's not so picky with the backswing because he's about impact, yeah. how you deliver in the club. I've always been, you know, coming from my David Ledbetter days, I always really wanted it on plane, looking really clean up at the top. So at the US Open, I know I had it a little in, a little deep, and a little across the line at the top. Which obviously, as you start turning, that drops in under. Mm -hmm. So Sean knew that, but necessarily doesn't want to fix it. U.S. Open week, mm -hmm. you know, don't want to get too much into that. So what he said to me was, "Wide stance, play the ball up." You know, so in a sense, fixing with the D plane. So yeah. it was, if anything, I was dropping under plane, but by keeping the ball a little bit further forward, just had more time to square it up. So it just shows you don't have to be perfect to play the game. Mm -hmm. So that was a that was a fix in in real time yeah. and, a, and a fix that's helping your ball flight without changing your ball swing. So you oh, simply one at a time. Well, really, really exactly. Just what you want last exactly. Day. So that was the last couple of days of the US Open. That's all we focused on. So, yeah. Very good. One last one, I suppose, for the amateur guys who are watching at home. Um, if you had one tip or one common thing you see amateurs do all the time, what would you say you could give them a tip to do? Very difficult question again, but all you yeah. say you see the majority of the people that you play with. If they lose their posture, so they start, you know, bent over the ball, and halfway down they start standing up out of it. And the only thing you're going to do there is start to throw your arms out at it, or, or certainly, you know, get a high left hand, which I think is a very weak hitting position, and typically that leaves the face way right. So I see a lot of people sort of stand up and, and miss the ball high right. 
Mm -hmm. So the tip I try to give them is to try and feel like they're they stay in their spine angle and just really turn. They chase at the right side, but mm -hmm. in their in their tilt. Yeah, yeah. And that seems to work really it's well. It's all about turning, isn't it? It is all about it's turning. Right. And I like to try and get people's ball positions further forward and help them give them that time yeah, yeah. to square it up. Yeah. Not many people who do that. Out there. We've never we've never told anyone that the ball was too far forward. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have not. That's too far back. It needs to be forward. Quite right. It's it's gives you more time. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Brilliant, okay. Now, uh, we are doing some video work with Darren Clark in a few days' time, so I'm asking, asking this question as well. If it was a long drive competition, who would win, you or Darren Clark? Um, ten <laughs> years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, Clark, okay. may, maybe me now. Okay. Um, I think I've gone longer, and I don't know about Clark, but he, you know, he used to be obviously incredibly yeah, strong, life. he used to train hard, yeah. he used to... Uh, he's back on the weights now, he's lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. and, and he's training hard, so I don't know how he's hitting it, but... Um, He's always been a great ball striker, but I think right now I've got the edge. Oh, I would say that that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Carry on, sorry, carry on, carry on. No, in the last two, three years, I've picked up ten yards, and I Brilliant. think that that's been it's been big for me. But uh, yeah, I've got a secret move. I've got the leg. Yeah. Kick. Oh, okay. Well, the I, let, leg I, kick. I, let, I let the left heel come up, and I stomp it down on the ground, and, and it kind of, just, works, okay, kind of cool. just creates some more ground ground forces, and yeah. Increases rotational speed. Doesn't always go straight. <laughs> but um, give it that long one. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, one last one. I promise this last one. Um, if you were to challenge me and Pierce in a match, because we're not bad, we can actually play a little bit. Match. Can do a little bit. <laughs> Who would be the one person you would have in your team to play in challenges? It's got to be my man, Pulse, doesn't it? Pulse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've got to get the fog eyes. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, he's. He's such a good match play player, and uh, he's always a good laugh to have on the golf course, you know, first and foremost. But the great thing about playing a pulse, if you're playing an ultimate shot or foursomes, as we know in England, um, you know, you knock it four foot by, you know, he's got your back coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got your back. So, great, great player, great competitor. Mm -hmm. I've obviously had a good record with him in the Ryder Cup. His record in the Ryder Cup second to none. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm pretty good partner. I'm pretty scared now. Yeah. <laughs> really really if really you want that match to happen, hit the like button. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Brilliant. Okay, Justin. Uh, Thank you guys. I know you're so busy. Thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bring this back, please. Yes. Thank you very much. Guys, right. thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Um, give us a thumbs up. Post your comments down below, and we'll see you soon on Me and My Golf TV. Go a little bit. I didn't quite hold it at the start. Okay. That's why it's gone maybe four yards. So that was done, probably a straight shot more than a more than a slight exactly. fade then. It was just sometimes we as pros we were always they hit it close and straight.